Everybody else was on time? Okay, well, you three pay for being late. Then, since the rest of you that were on time, I'd like to know who stood up for the Star Spangled Banner when it played. Everyone that did not stand up for when the Star Spangled Banner was played owes a dollar. Would that be everyone else? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Ex excluding who, Larry? Sorry, I'm trying to keep track excluding of the fines here. Me. I stood up. I'll, I'll start out with brag books. I'm, I'm going to, I have several. Uh, first, uh, uh, a buck, I want to pay a buck for the fact that Donna took over for me entirely last week because I managed to get delayed in Ohio and barely made the meeting. And uh, she was awesome, as usual, and I appreciate it. Um, I like to brag about the idea that my daughter and her husband bought a house in Boston and paid about five, no, about seven times as much as I thought it was worth. But apparently in Boston, that's what the going rate is. Um, I'd like to uh, brag about the idea that the health department was the subway business of the day from WAWK Today. So I, I happily ate a subway sandwich from them. And, uh, and then last but not least, I want to be thankful about the fact that the tree in my yard fell on my shed rather than on my house. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that was, the, so, yeah. so if anybody wants some nice Buckeye wood, then uh, we'll be starting tomorrow. Uh, anybody else have brag books? Terry, I have a brag book. Fire away. Um, so, uh, I like to give you guys updates on what the scouts are doing as we are the charter organization. Uh, last night we canceled our meeting due to the anticipated storm tonight. We're over at the park where we normally meet and we are currently cleaning up, uh, helping the park pile, pile the smaller stuff, getting it ready so they can come in and clean up much easier. So, uh, our scouts are out here volunteering this evening and, uh, just like to brag on them and they invited uh, friends and family. So it's more than just the kids. I think we've got. 14, 15 of us tonight. Hey. Nice work. Nice work. Yeah. Anybody else? I do. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to say a brag book for all of the, not only the city departments, but all the citizens that chipped in and helped during the storm. It was amazing to see people come together and um, help cut up and move brush. And yeah, and I'm so thankful that no one was hurt through all this. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. May I add one more brag buck in relationship to that? I'd like to have a brag on my brother, Doug. Sure. He had his backpack blower, and he blew off all the sidewalks. He <laughs> gets the debris into the street. He did? He had fun. And then, then I saw Brother Tom doing the same thing over at the park office. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Great work, great work. It's uh, it's good to see the community come together. Sure is. And uh, so it, it's we're lucky to live here. So uh, with that, I think we will explain a little bit about who he is and what he does, and we welcome you to the Kendallville Rotary Club. Well, thank you, RJ and President Terry, and everyone. It's good to be here. Uh, first, I hope everyone's uh, recovered okay. I guess you guys got walloped by a storm on Monday. Is that is that did I get that news correctly? RJ, everything okay? Okay, uh, you're muted, so it must be okay. Well, we, we lost a lot of trees, and uh, nobody was hurt, but it, it was a real mess. Uh, but we, we've been doing disaster relief now for 20 years, shelter box, and it, it all started uh, with an idea at a Rotary Club. Uh, there was a club, and still is a club, in, in Cornwall, England, and they had a, a member who uh, was a retired search and rescue diver for the Royal Navy. So he had a pretty good idea of what it might take to survive with those bare necessities. So their club looked around uh, the world at disaster relief and, and found that there was a gap for shelter, just proper tents and, and ways for people to uh, take shelter. You know, the old, the old triad of food, water, and shelter being the necessities to survive. And they said food was being done quite well across the board. Uh, same with water, but uh, a lack of shelter. So Shelter Box began as a Rotary Club's project. Uh, and over the years, it, it, well, really within the first couple of years, it grew so large, so fast, 
that they knew they had to create a permanent nonprofit uh, in the UK, which is the Shelterbox Trust. Uh, affiliates around the world uh, found out about what they were doing and wanted to take part in it. And now since 2012, we are an official project partner of Rotary International. That being said, we don't get funding through the Rotary Foundation. Uh, we aren't operated, we aren't a Rotary program. Uh, so uh, we're a project partner. Other items, uh, they've been in the kit for uh, the, the box here for, for a number of years, like mosquito nets, uh, rope, uh, tools, and, and uh, blankets and ground covers. And then some newer items like solar lights uh, have been added over the last few years. And those are now really among the most cherished items that we give families are uh, light after the sun goes down. In 2015, we started uh, supplying shelter kits. Now this is tarpaulin based shelter. I know if you're anything like me about the only thing I use tarp for is covering my firewood. I never really think about constructing a house out of it. That's exactly what our beneficiaries look at it as uh, a way of constructing a shelter for themselves uh, that might not have those constraints uh, in space and size uh, as a tent does. And then they are also looking at what other uses they could use tarps for down the road. And that's something when you look at a tent, it's pretty much a tent. But when you look at a tarp, you could do a lot of different things like uh, put your harvest on them and be able to take large bundles uh, back on your oxen when once you couldn't. You could look at these full-size tools and go out and get work. These are the things that uh, people have reported back to us uh, uh, that they've been able to achieve uh, after receiving shelter kits. And here's an example. This is Grace and her kids. A cyclone that die struck in Malawi last year, uh, just over a year ago. It was in March uh, 2019. And she had to put those kids up in trees. That's how, how fast and how deep the floodwaters are. Now, they're, they are a family of limited means. Uh, they, they have a mud brick home, uh, which did not hold up at all uh, after the cyclone. So we were able to give them a shelter kit. They could then construct a shelter like you see now. And hopefully by this point, and I have not heard of a case study follow up with them yet, uh, but they'll probably have transitioned back into mud brick houses again. And they have these tarps to use. Maybe they could use this as the kid's house or a, a livestock pen. Or as I mentioned earlier, uh, they could harvest and, and take crops and items like that. When I first learned about shelter box after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. I happened to be both president elect of my club and act advisor. And it was those Interact kids that came back to me and said, Mr. Tobin, what should we do for those people in Haiti? And I, I like, normally I don't give them a good answer. I just kind of point them in a direction and let them amaze me. And I said, why don't you research rotary and disaster relief and see what you come up with. And they brought shelter box back to me and it literally changed who I am. Uh, before shelter box, I hated putting up a tent. Uh, now I don't think twice about doing it. Uh, the Haiti response uh, was really special to me. Uh, our Interact Club, uh, they raised a thousand dollars. Our club uh, uh, matched that with a thousand dollars. We had a, an anonymous donor also do a thousand dollars, and then all the other president elects got challenged. And our district in 5180 raised over twenty thousand dollars in the Haiti response. And in that response, we helped over thirty-three thousand families. What I really want to point out here is the, the gender. Uh, it's over 80% female in Midwile. Uh, they all share a similar story to Esther. Uh, Boko Haram raids a village. Uh, they kill all the men. They kidnap the youngest kids. And they tell everyone else to run or they just leave them for dead. Uh, Esther was told to run. Esther was then used as target practice. Uh, it's about the most barbaric thing I could uh, possibly imagine, except to add that she was target practice for a bunch of kids that had been previously kidnapped and now under basically a kill or be coiled uh, uh, a mandate from their captors in Boko Haram. Esther uh, escaped, obviously. She made it to Cameroon. This was uh, uh, in 2016. I mean, it's still going on today. There's uh, over three dozen now documented cases of Boko Haram uh, violence even going right up into the end of last month uh, in this region. Um, she had a tough time adjusting, as could be expected. Uh, but, you know, shelter, water filters, things like that, it's not the whole story, uh, and, and she now owns a business, if you could believe that. A uh, business owner in a refugee camp. Well, here's a newsflash. Some refugee workers in refugee camps are refugees themselves. People don't want to just sit and wait. Uh, they don't live very long in, in, when they shut down like that. Uh, you know, suicide rates are all over the world right now because we all have to isolate. Imagine not even have a Rotary Club to meet with or, or a means of, of income to uh, help yourself 
or your family. So Esther uh, learned how to sew. She's really good at it. Uh, she has a husband. You see her, her husband's behind her. Yeah, they're young. They're, they aren't even 22 yet. Uh, they have a kid. Uh, and, and life goes on. Uh, You want to talk about the picnic? Sure. Why not? Uh, it's next Tuesday uh, at the Sport Complex, the Rot- Rotary Pavilion. Um, we ended. Up, I, I we were not able to go with highs only because it had been way too expensive and out of our uh, budget because we did not have enough people sign up. I think we're standing right at like thirty people, maybe thirty-two. Um, so if you haven't RSVP to me, I think I either text or emailed people I didn't hear from. So, um, but um, we're actually, Kristen Johnson and I are just gonna, we're gonna fix the mail. So we're gonna have like barbecue chicken, pulled barbecue chicken and brats with pepper and onions. And then we're gonna do some salads and some fun stuff on the side. So the price would be about the same as what uh, the email I sent out. So if it's less, I'll shoot you an email and let you know, but plan on that. So 615, Sport Complex at the Rotary Pavilion. Bring your cornhole throwing arms. Um, we may do a little competition, you know, have a little fun. So um, be practicing up. That's all I got. Since we're not doing highway cleanup, um, we're going to be uh, cleaning Noble uh, a section of Noble Trails um, a mile or two. And uh, Jenna has generously agreed to kind of that up since she's on the board of both of those organizations. Uh, um, and because I'm too lazy to do it. And uh, so she'll, she'll have more information for us uh, as we get closer and closer to that time. Then I want to discuss. Terry, yes, Terry, please. Can I interrupt real quick? Please. Um, uh, I have been talking with Jenna. We are. Uh, the plan is we're going to meet at the um, VFW where we normally meet, and we are going to send a group out to the west, send a group out to the east, drop them off, walk back toward the middle, and then uh, we'll eat at Jerry's afterward uh, for some for a light meal there. So same time, same location. We're just going to be cleaning up a different stretch. Hey, Chris, Chris, I'm sorry, Terry. Chris, I'll put together a Google form for signups for that. Thanks. Yes, uh, we are asking Sorry, everybody to sign up as far as meals go by next Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, I need to place the order. We're going to get sandwiches uh, and prepackaged uh, box box lunches from um, Watch My Cakes here in town. Awesome. Do you, do you want deadline the uh, the 18th. Uh, I'd ask for everyone to sign up by the end of the meeting next week, okay. and um, and and we can remind everybody again next week. And uh, yeah, that'll be our deadline. So look for a Google form via email. Okay, great. Sarah, Thank you. If, yes, if please. If I may, it's not necessarily a bring your own chair, but if you have a favorite chair, we will not be eating at tables. We're going to be separated. We'll be distanced with chairs, and don't be afraid to wear your masks if you end up inside because it rains or something weird. Um, that's where we're at with that. Because what I'd like to do is begin the hybrid meetings, that is, get back to uh, potentially to the Legion, on September the first, so um, we'll we'll we're going to trial the, the hybrid meeting at uh, at another board meeting for another organization. Oddly enough, tomorrow, uh, so we'll uh, we'll try that out and try to make sure that uh, that those who don't feel comfortable uh, attending in person can um, can attend by via Zoom uh, still. And uh, and participate in the meetings, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, Carrie, yes, I go ahead and say something, and I and I apologize for doing it now, but um, I have a meeting that is at seven, and I'm kind of late for that already. But um, so I don't know if this would have been a bribe buck, or maybe it would be a better a fine. But um, I just wanted to let everybody know that um, I'm going to be a remote member 
uh, starting mid-September because I am going to be going back to Italy. So good news and bad news. So um, unfortunately, that means I will not be able to be an officer. Um, I'd love to say I would tune in to all the Zoom meetings, but 6.15 here is after midnight there. And as much as I love all you guys, I'm not sure I'm going to do that. So, so I just, you know, I really wanted to let you guys know that. Uh, when you About a service that. project to build a ramp for a, a veteran in a wheelchair. Yeah, they would like, they wondered if our rotary group would want to build a ramp She's wheelchair bound, but they can't, her daughter can't get them out because they don't have a ramp. 